Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel, String Things by Mel. My name is Melissa. I'm a stay-at-home mom living in Vancouver, Canada, and on my channel, I like to chat and share everything about my knitting hobby. Today, I'm back with another pattern comparison video. Now, the goal of this type of video is to look at a few patterns, um, compare them, and see what information is publicly available on the sales page and kind of practice looking at that information while determining what's important to you in a garment and allow you to make an informed decision uh, before choosing a pattern. Now, I also want to say that this is by no means um, pattern or designer endorsement, nor is it pattern or designer shaming. So when I choose patterns for this kind of video, I do a pretty quick uh, search on Ravelry with relatively strict parameters. And I kind of just choose what's been released recently and maybe it might seem more popular, but it's just a quick search, much like how you would start your own pattern searches probably. Um, it is a little bit influenced by what I see on Instagram, which then is also influenced by whatever is happening on with the algorithm on my Instagram. Um, but again, the goal is just to practice looking at patterns, comparing the details, and finding out what you like more or less between them. So the theme of today's pattern comparison is crew neck pullovers, um, which are slightly oversized to oversized fitting and all feature saddle shoulders. So in case you are not familiar with uh, saddle shoulders are, it's actually very similar uh, to Raglan and also very similar in construction if you're doing kind of top down or bottom up um, construction. But if you can see on my Raglan sweater that I'm wearing right now, the stitches or the fabric is seamless from the neck across down the shoulder to the wrist. And there is a seam that runs diagonally from the collar um, into the underarm area. What is similar with the saddle shoulder is that it also has the same continuous look over top of the shoulder. What's different is that there is no diagonal seam. There is more of a square um, seam. So there'll be two um, lines on either side. So the front and the back of the shoulder will have seam lines running parallel to the shoulder and then straight down and so you can imagine, you can see the lines in my rib ribbing actually, you can imagine that the seam would run straight across one of these rib uh, columns there and then straight down. So it's kind of like a set and sleeve down here, um, but because it's continuous over the shoulder, that's why it's like a raglan that way. Um, and because of this kind of square um, seam line that the saddle shoulder creates is generally been considered a more masculine shape um, because that squaring can bring attention to the shoulders. Um, looks great on most men, I think, who are trying to accentuate broad shoulders. Um, not necessarily something that women may want to do, um, but something that's mentioned in these patterns that are up for comparison is that they'll say like, you know, if, you know, it's got a feminine twist to it or something to that effect. Um, but that's uh, saddle shoulders in a nutshell. Now, I've never actually knit up a saddle shoulder garment, so I can't give any kind of personal advice or experience in that respect. Um, but that also means I'm looking at it hopefully with um, not so much bias. <laughs> As my last video, I was wearing one of the patterns which was up for comparison. Um, so the three patterns that I've selected for today's comparison, the first one is sweater number 26 from My Favorite Things Knitwear. Number two is the Lakes Pullover from Ozetta. And number three, the final pattern is the Joan Sweater from Gre Gregoria Fibers. <laughs> so 
what we're going to look at, um, so, oh yes, details. I've gone digital. I actually wrote down all my notes in a Google spreadsheet. So I'll leave a link uh, to that so you can access it and review the details that I'll be discussing, the details that I've decided to note down. Um, but these are all details that I've taken um, from Ravelry. I am a Ravelry user, um, just straight off of the sales page for these patterns. I have not purchased any of these patterns, so I'm not going to be able to provide any kind of insight um, further than what's on the sales page. So, what I'm going to go through is the sizes, um, the finished measurements, and kind of gauge, needle size, yarn weight, kind of finishing techniques. We're going to go through all of that. Um, so let's start off with sweater number 26 and the sizes. So the sizes offered, there are eight and they're labeled extra small to 4XL. This um, size offering has a finished bust circumference ranging from 42 inches to 59 and a half inches or 107 centimeters to 152 centimeters. Now, this pattern has a recommended positive ease in um, kind of two sets. So for extra small to extra large, the recommended positive ease is eight to 10 inches or 20 to 25 centimeters. And for the larger group of sizes, 2XL to 4XL, there is a recommended positive ease of six to eight inches or 15 to 20 centimeters. And after taking into account the recommended positive ease, the sizes correspond to an actual bust circumference range from 31 inches to 53 and a half inches to 82 centimeters to 137 centimeters. So if you want to have the recommended ease in your sweater, you need to fit within that size range. So there is, you know, somewhat of a generous amount of positive ease. So if you are just below or just above, you could knit the sweater, but it won't be the recommended amount or, you know, the same look as if, um, as the ones that, um, as the bus sizes that are listed for this pattern. So because the actual bust circumference is 31 to 53 and a half inches. This would technically be considered not size inclusive. Um, I think the general agreement for size inclusivity is 30 inches to 60 inches. So um, if you were filtering your patterns in your search based on those sizes, um, this would not come up if you were looking for um, size inclusive patterns. Uh, so there are two measurements listed on this pattern and that is bust circumference, as I mentioned already, and length. And it says measured at center back. So I would assume that this measurement is taken from the back where the collar meets the body, but not including the collar down to the bottom of the sweater. So body length. Um, now, are there further measurements included in the pattern? I don't know, but if you were trying to decide which pattern to knit up, you have to base it off of those two sizes only, or if you happen to go ahead and purchase this pattern, you'd have to go through each individual size and based on gauge, calculate the different um, dimensions or measurements of the garment. So if you are someone who has struggled with say armhole or yoke depth, you're going to have to go through and figure that out on your own. Um, and that's given if you've already paid for the pattern. Um, so the gauge for this sweater is 19 stitches by 27 rows. Uh, suggested needle size is five millimeters and suggested yarn weight is a fingering plus lace, or you could do a single strand of DK. Um, this sweater, the samples knit with Gepard Garn Pure Lana held with cashmere. 
and because it's so it's saying to use kind of like a DK weight yarn well five millimeters so if you do use a DK weight yarn and use five millimeters it's going to be a relatively drapey fabric I think typically for a DK weight yarn you're going to see four or four and a half millimeter size needles used um, so that's going to indicate um, a bit more flowy fabric um, some finishing some notice uh, notable finishing for this sweater is that it has one by one twisted rib you could of course sub that out with a different kind of ribbing and it does have a folded collar now this one has a collar that looks very similar to camisole number nine or t number one if you are familiar with those now I have actually done uh, camisole number nine, so I'm gonna take a gander and that this neckline is done the same way, and which means you're going to have to be somewhat comfortable or adventurous um, with seaming. Um, it looks very much like the collar, so I'm fairly confident it is done the same way. Um, my favorite thing is knitwear. The thing with the patterns this year seem to be that's like a signature color for her this year it seems so that is something um, to take into account but I really like how it's um, a shorter collar and it is stockinette um, for the collar so the one by one twisted ribbing was for the sleeve cuffs and the body um, this one is stockinette and it's shorter just like a, a regular crew neck now, uh, some techniques that are listed on the Ravelry sales page is contiguous method. So this is a top-down uh, constructed sweater. Contiguous method refers to a method um, credit kind of goes, or kind of goes to, credit goes to Susie Myers. You can search that name on Ravelry and there is a free PDF explaining that method. But essentially, it just means that you are creating um, the shoulders and everything uh, seamlessly from the top down. Um, short rows are listed and um, as I said before, sewing the neckline. All right, so let's get into the details for sweater number two, which is the Lakes Pullover from Ozetta. Um, this one is also worked top down and Let's see, features a double layer at the neck for added warmth, a wardrobe staple to wear on any occasion. Uh, Lakes Pullover, there are nine sizes offered. They are labeled extra small to 5XL, finished bust circumference ranges from 40 inches to 67 and a half inches, or 100 centimeters to 169 centimeters. There is a recommended positive ease uh, across the board. It's the same for all sizes, nine and a half inches to 10 and a half inches or 24 to 27 centimeters. So this one has more positive ease than sweater number 26. Uh, after taking into account the positive ease, the actual bus circumference range is 29 and a half inches to 58 inches or 73 centimeters to 145 centimeters now for my smaller bodied uh, friends out there this is a good sign because the size range is goes down to 29 and a half inches uh, we don't see this a lot in some of the popular patterns. A lot of them are in the 31 to 32 inch range uh, starting point. Um, so I like that. However, this goes up to a 58 inch bus, so falls a little short of that 60 inch um, or 152 centimeter bus size uh, to be considered size inclusive. Now, in terms of measurements provided on the sales page, 
Um, of course, bus circumference is listed. And the sales page does note that a schematic is included in the pattern. I have only done one other Ozetta pattern and it's the Miles shirt jacket. And that one, the schematic did include several different measurements, which if you are more visual, you can look at it and that can help you determine which size um, you actually want to knit up. So that is something that's great to see. The gauge for this sweater is 18 stitches by 28 rows, suggested needle size is five millimeters and so that puts it with a worsted yarn weight the sample is world dreamers la rinconada um, it's classified as a dk but it is more of a worsted weight at the gauge given and that's a note from the pattern so it's interesting to see that both sweater number 26 and the legs pullover have the same needle size very similar gauge um, but I think the legs pullover is going to be less flowy than sweater number 26. Some finishing to note for sweater number, or sorry, for the legs pullover. This one has a uh, one by one rib, so not toasted rib, rib regular one by one rib and it has a folded collar which has the one by one ribbing some techniques listed for this pattern uh, knitting flat knitting in the round german short rows and tubular bind off if you don't like tubular bind off you could um sub that out um, and substitute in Italian bind off instead. And what's the difference is that Italian bind off does not have the double knit rows. Um, so if you do change out to a different bind off, you may have to knit an additional like two rows um, because of the double knitting that's involved with tubular bind off. But um, if this pattern has the same note like the Miles shirt jacket. Um, it will note how many extra rows to knit if you use a different bind off. The legs pullover has um, a taller collar than the um, sweater number 26. And this one, I feel like the body length looks a little bit longer. And the proportions of how wide the sleeve is at the underarm and um, it looks, I don't want to say slimmer because it is an oversized sweater, but it's got some different proportions going on there. Um, but let's move on to the last sweater before we really dig into what sets each sweater apart. And that's the Joan sweater from Gregoria Fibers. Um, this one has a little description here of, while inspired by classic saddle shoulder men's sweater, the sweater has lots of feminine details, cropped silhouette, and a relaxed fit to ensure a great fit. Detailed neck shaping with a double crew folded neckline, wide sleeves add a retro touch featuring our signature decreases. Now, I've never done a pattern from Gregoria Fibers, so I don't know what signature decreases mean. Um, I wonder, based on looking at the photo, is it the slight ballooning at the end of the sleeve? That would be my guess. Um, but let's keep going through the details. There are nine sizes offered, labeled one to nine. The finish bust circumference ranges from 40.9 inches to 58.5 inches or 105 centimeters to 150 centimeters. And there's a recommended positive ease of 9.8 inches or 25 centimeters. So again, lots of ease on this one. The actual bust circumference that this pattern is made for ranges from 31 inches to 49 inches or 80 centimeters to 125 centimeters. So. This one has the most narrow size offering uh, compared to the other patterns. It only, you know, having only going up to 49 inches, it is definitely not size inclusive. Um, 
Again, there is a generous amount of positive ease. So if you really like how this one looks, you could still knit it up if you are on the upper size range. However, you're not going to get the same look because you're not going to have the recommended amount of positive ease. Okay, what's the measurement listed on the sales page? Bus circumference and bus circumference only. Hopefully, one would hope that there's more measurements listed in the pattern. If not, you're going to have to go through uh, based on stitch counts and the gauge. You could calculate the measurements yourself, but it's something that not everyone has the time to do or maybe not the skill to do confidently. Gauge for this one is the lightest of the three at 22 stitches by 32 rows. Four millimeter needles is what's suggested and a DK weight yarn. And this one actually has a single strand um, suggested. Um, so the sample used a single strand of BC Garn Lock Le Monde and some notable finishing. So this one has a one by one twisted rib and it does have a folded collar. However, the folded collar on this one is a shorter uh, collar than the one on the Lakes Pullover. Um, this one in terms of the overall look and the silhouette, I find it's like a hybrid of sweater number 26 and the Lakes Pullover. It seems to have the, you know, kind of cropped silhouette that sweater number 26 has, but the sweater kind of sleeve shape kind of reminds me more of the, a little bit more of the Lakes Pullover, but it's the fold over collar that's more like the Lakes Pullover. So let's get into what really sets these three apart. So you're looking at them, they look pretty similar. Um, the yarn weights are very similar in these um, and same with the needle size. However, if you're very into knitting with five millimeters versus four millimeters, then that's going to narrow your focus to sweater number 26 and the lakes pull over. Um, very similar yarn weight and you're looking at DK yarns. Um, again, the legs pull over the sample, the yarn listed is technically a DK weight yarn, but you're knitting at a worsted weight um, gauge as noted in the pattern. So what's going to make you choose one over the other? The recommended ease could be something. Um, that matters to you. The sweater number 26 has the least amount of positive ease. However, the proportions of that one, I, I don't want to ruin it for anyone. <laughs> but when I look at sweater number 26, I don't know why I get like bat wing vibes for whatever reason. I would love to see a photograph of someone in this sweater with like their arms out, like if you were like the letter T and just see like how big is that armhole? How big is that sleeve there? Because to me, even though the sleeve looks relatively still wide at the bottom, it looks like it's got quite a bit of taper, quite a number of decreases from here to there. And that for me is a silhouette that I am not so into. Um, I wouldn't consider myself to have really broad shoulders or be broad up here, but my shoulders are definitely like the widest part of my body. If you look at me just two dimensionally this way, um, I've got wide shoulders and it's not something I necessarily want to emphasize. Um, so maybe looking at a saddle shoulder is not the best thing for me, but you know, these, these are things to um, take into account. So it has the least amount of positive ease in terms of the bust circumference, but I feel like sweater number 26 has the largest armhole for whatever reason, based on what I'm looking at the pictures um, comparing to the other sweaters. If you like the more kind of crop fit and like, sorry, I hate to say it again, bat wing <laughs> arms, then sweater number 26 just may be your jam. Um, the Lakes Pullover is 
got quite a bit of positive ease. It's definitely on the upper range of ease from the three patterns that we have here. If you are a smaller busted person, this pattern would be better for you because it says it is intended for, you know, as small as 29 and a half inches. Um, based on my experience of, uh, I mean, very limited experience of one Ozetta pattern, this pattern will have a schematic that's going to let you, you know, pick and choose. Well, not just necessarily pick and choose, but look at and review the different measurements. Having a schematic in the, well, not just the Ozetta pattern, but having a schematic in general is a great visual guide to allow knitters to review the measurements, compare them all in one spot, and help make a decision on which size you actually want to knit. It allows you to look at, you know, what matters more to you. Is it the armhole size? Is it, you know, the yoke depth? Sleeve length and body length are things, you know, especially for stockinette fabrics, are going to be something that are more easily changeable or adjustable by you know knitters of almost any skill level um, but yoke depth and armhole size is something that you kind of want to like pick um, and not mess around with too much um, you can you know adjust it a bit on these like stockinette fabrics um, but if it say was like a color work or there's some sort of textural pattern going on might be something that you just don't want to mess with um, the legs pullover, if this is something that you want to be, you know, more for like warmth, I do like the taller, almost mock neck length of the one by one rib collar that it has. Um, and the silhouette looks, you know, it looks boxy. I don't know if there's any sort of waist shaping or body shaping going on with any of these patterns, but it looks relatively straight um, and it's longer. Like it doesn't say that it's a crop silhouette, although you can change the length if you're knitting this up. And then looking at the kind of proportions from the underarm to the wrist, it looks like there's like a less severe decrease rate um, compared to sweater number 26. It looks just, um, I guess, less tapered. Um, this one, based on the sample as well, the sleeve length looks shorter, but not necessarily too short. Sweater number 26 looks like it has, the look is going for really long sleeves and having that like break or extra fabric at the end. Again, something you could adjust, but I wonder if sweater number 26 has decreases worked in all the way. So then you're going to have to adjust your wrist circumference perhaps. Um, so yeah, I personally like the proportion of the silhouette that's going on with the Ozetta pattern. Let's take a closer look at the Jones sweater from Gregoria Fibers. Now, this one I was mentioning, it looks kind of like a hybrid between sweater number 26 and the Lakes pullover. Um, this one, even though it has quite a bit of positive ease built in, for whatever reason, it doesn't look like it. Um, it somehow has this more relaxed fit look rather than oversized look. Like, I don't know, do you guys get that vibe too? Maybe because of the cropped silhouette, maybe because, you know, although the bust circumference has a lot of positive ease, maybe the armhole is something that's not super big. Um, I find when you have like drop shoulders, for example, um, depending on the size of that armhole can really contribute to, well, the bat wing look or how oversized overall um, the garment can look. And, you know, just based on looking at the sample photos here, again, there's no photo here, just, you know, someone hanging out like this to show the arms, but it doesn't look like there's a huge amount of excess fabric under here. Um, I mean, there is still, because it is an oversized sweater, but like not an extreme amount. Now for the collar for the Jones sweater, um, 
I don't know how it is secured down, um, but it has kind of a more defining detail along the edge like sweater number 26. So if you really want that collar to stand out, um, that might be something that you like more about this one. I mean, it does say in the sales page how it has like a special neckline detail going on there. You can see um, some of the neckline shaping um, there. Some people don't like that, some people do. Sometimes I don't even like to see that extra neck shaping there, but anyways. I'm not familiar with Gregoria fibers, um, their pattern. So is there a schematic in there? I don't know. There's no note about whether there is a schematic. All right, guys. So that is a look at three saddle shoulder patterns. This time around, I feel like me personally, like I don't even know which one I would pick. Um... Well, I know I wouldn't pick sweater number 26 only because I think it looks too big in in this area, which I'm not into. Um, given that these are all saddle shoulder and saddle shoulder is traditionally kind of like a, a masculine um, shape, I could see this pattern being knit up by or for men as well, which is nice. So it could be a bit of a unisex design. Again, I don't know if there's any shaping in the body, but I guess for depending on your body proportions, you just may have to increase um, like the armhole size or yoke depth. So that's kind of like a plus about this type of shoulder, not necessarily these patterns themselves, um, but of this type of shoulder style. Um, I have a Ravelry bundle of these three together, um, if that makes it easy for you guys to refer to them. So I will leave a link for that as well. Um, but I hope this was, um, somewhat informative for you guys. I do have another pattern comparison video in the works um, from a viewer request on me on my first um, spot the differences video. Um, but if there are another set of patterns that you are interested in me kind of going through the details, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to uh, take a look at those and consider those for a future video. Um, but thanks so much for hanging out with me guys and um, until the next one, happy knitting. Bye.